What's going on guys? So today I'm sharing a, uh, a trade that I did. I did a, a ton of trades and I'm gonna make in a few different trade videos just because I think they're interesting uh, knives, of course. But it's been a very busy week. I would say I probably had easily 14, maybe 15 different trades this week. Um, and for some bigger stuff, some cooler, harder to find items. So I'm very excited about it. But this is one of those videos. So today we're looking at two different knives, um, as well as some goodies in here, which let's break into right away. Let's look at the extras. Uh, inside this knife, is, or excuse me, this knife, inside this box is a uh, Phoenix from Spyderco, but also some miscellaneous silver. So that's really cool. This is for, I mean, it's for melt value. Uh, the actual ring is really interesting. It's kind of a, a rope ring. It stands up pretty high though, uh, as far as, you know, wearing it for me. You know, I, I could, I'm, I'm not going to. Um, I just think it's fascinating for the silver. Although it would make a pretty, well, it's too big for a pinky ring. Way too big for that. I need to kind of like a, an old Italian guy pinky ring, I think. I don't know, kind of like the idea. But anyway, um, so that's just the miscellaneous silver, which I'm always interested in. That just made up for a little bit of uh, trade value. So first, we're taking a look at this Phoenix. All right, this is a limited run with the red scales on here. Let me zoom in here for a second. This is interesting too, because at first I just took this out and I literally thought that was grease on here, but it's not, it's actually a protective film. I've never seen this from uh, Spyderco before, but there's actually a protective film on the front, which I'm assuming was also on the back at some point. But anyway, so that, that's interesting. I just haven't seen that before. So this is the, uh, the Phoenix, all right. Initial impressions are good while choking up. It's super comfortable. Well, I would say super comfortable. The ergonomics are fantastic, but you do have kind of a, not sharp by any means, but you have, you know, more acute shoulders here. So it's not like a super rounded or anything like that, but ergos are very good. And of course this has the ball lock on here, which I'm a fan of for um, the Spyderco Dodo. You know, one of the, the more known uh, weird Spyderco knives, but this is definitely up there, the Phoenix. Just fascinating. This for me, I'm not gonna be using this one. This is just a collector's piece and probably going to be a future uh, trade item. Um, so yeah, so let me put that back in here. And then we're gonna get on to that knife there, which was really like the most exciting part of this trade. I, I worked out a trade for this, and this was like almost like an afterthought. A uh, person had said, I also have this knife, any interest? And I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. I love all Spydercos. I mean, like I said, some of them I'm more excited to use than others. Actually, let me see, is this a note? I don't know if, it's... yes it is actually. All right. Go ahead and read this. I'm like, that doesn't look like something that came in the box. All right, Jeff, thanks for the trade. Uh, threw some extra silver in there. Uh, really do not have much anymore after selling uh, to fund my dad's funeral. That comes with people's passing. Uh, first off, I'm very sorry to hear about your father. I did have a, a conversation about this. Yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things. Um, funerals are extremely expensive. Um, I was actually having this conversation about cremations for dogs with someone recently and you know, it was kind of hard for them to believe how expensive it was to cremate a dog. And I said, you know, it's the last money you'll ever spend on it. It's just one of those things, you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, so like I said, I am a gunsmith uh, and get um, knives in payment a lot on top of other crazy uh, things people offer up. Anytime you're in Ohio, um, swing by the range and have some fun. <laughs> I'd love to, but... Every single time I hear a guy go, poof, I get really, really like, I don't know. I, I just, I know how much that ammo is costing. It, it almost takes the fun out of it. It's really close. I have been shooting some 22. I did shoot some nine millimeter out of my 43 just because, I, you know, it's good to keep practicing, but just some ball nine millimeter and only put like, you know, 20 rounds through it. I got a box of 50, actually I have two boxes of 50 that I'm specifically using just for, you know, shooting every now and again. But it, like I said, it's kind of hard to, Hard to pop those rounds, uh, hurt your pocket. But anyway, uh, hopefully eventually it'll pass. Um, I gave you one of my uh, cards for contact info. Sure we will, I'm sure we will do trades in the future. Uh, have a Pina and Torpin, Torpin Custom. Sounds cool. Uh, I'm gonna let it go before, before to uh, something I'll reach out when I do, before to, I'm not sure, oh, before too long, okay. Um, and I'll reach out when I do. P.S. Hope you can uh, read the handwriting. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm struggling 
but it's because I'm looking for a viewfinder. Like if I was just reading this, I'm sure I can make it out a lot faster. People kind of forget that sometimes. I mean, I could read, I could read English and people write totally fine. Your handwriting is as good as mine or better. Um, but I am looking through a tiny little viewfinder on the camera. So sometimes it's hard. Anyway, PS, hope you can uh, read the handwriting. I'm, um, I'm something, but right. Oh, I'm 36, but write like a 10 year old. Thanks, Daniel. I am also 36, Daniel, and we have the same handwriting. How about that? We probably had the same teacher that taught us how to write. But anyway, thank you very much for the note. Thank you for the uh, the offers. I'll, I'll always be interested in knives. It is kind of cool uh, doing gunsmithing stuff. He was when I was talking to him, he's doing a bunch of seracoding for someone. Uh, it's a fascinating business. It really is. And of course, you know, I love guns. Anyway, on to the main event here, and that is this knife that we're looking at, and this is the old school, original cold steel boot knife slash push dagger and this one is called the terminator now that being said this one is the terminator however it was also sold at some point as the defender one and it was also sold at some point as the magnum skinner okay you have to imagine this is like late 80s up to mid 90s ish you know and they did some different marketing they changed the name a couple times but this was the Terminator, at least more times than not, it was sold as the, the Terminator. I want to say the Magnum Skinner may have been predating that. I don't really know. i never seen it sold as a Magnum Skinner. I've only seen these actually called Terminators or Defender 1s. But Anyway, so we have an original 80s, late 80s to you know mid to early 90s um, push dagger from Cold Steel. All right, right off the bat, we see we have the nice leather sheath as opposed to today's Kydex sheaths. All right, nice little uh, spring steel clip on there. Let me put that knife down for a second. Not that you need to hear <laughs> that it's a clip. You can see it. But it's just really nice. Really nice made leather. It smells great. It just smells, it smells like the 80s, if that makes sense. Uh, I was a little kid during the 80s, by the way. I was born in 1984, so it's not like I was rocking the 80s and knew all about it. I was mostly a 90s kid. But anyway, I was created in the 80s. So uh, here it is, all right, double-edged. You can see on the handle here, the molded uh, like Kraton style rubber handle. It says made in Japan. I'll show you that real close, real quick. Let that focus a second. There we go, made in Japan. Let me flip it over. You see Cold Steel Inc, Ventura, California. <laughs> California, California, there we go. God, tongue-tied today. Made in Japan, also marked on the blade. All right, and the reverse is sterile. Now, it's interesting about these original ones. You could see that not only do we have the groove cut out here, but it's ground on both sides, as opposed to the cheaper, later-made ones where they were chisel ground, so one side was completely flat, uh, and then the other side was ground. They changed the design a little bit here and there, saved some cost and money over the years, but uh, this was the old school, the original. What makes this so exciting, though, is its debuts in two movies specifically. There might even be more movies I'm not aware of. But um, this was in Platoon. So, of course, most people remember the scene. Uh, I'll actually, I'll insert a picture if I could find one now. Now the movie itself is classic, but this particular scene always stood out to me because I'm the knife guy, right? So you have Tom Berenger, okay, who's the bad guy in this movie. If you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but most people have. If you're younger and you never even heard of Platoon, you are, you're sleeping. You have to go check it out, find it online. I'm sure you'll you know, find it for free somewhere, um, but definitely watch the movie. But this particular scene where Tom Berger, Berenger, excuse me, is standing over Charlie Sheen, and he's like about to kill him. And everyone's like, you know, don't kill him, don't do it. And it ends up just slashing Charlie Sheen's cheek, you know, um, which, you know, I don't want to give away the movie in case you haven't seen it, but just classic movie, classic knife scene. This is the exact knife that was in that scene and that Tom Berenger has on his, um, his pack, you know, or his layout, I say, not his actual pack. It's actually hanging on his shoulder, I want to say upside down like this on, if I remember correct, maybe his left shoulder, just like this. So basically during war, if he needed to get hand-to-hand -hand combat, he could just pull it out. Now, besides Platoon, this is also in a very classic movie. It, classic to me, even though it's kind of a dumb movie, I love it, I grew up with it, and that is Total Recall. Total Re Recall is one of those goofy movies 
uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. And uh, I was very young when I saw that movie the first time, and I specifically remember the scene with the woman with the three boobs at the bar. So yes, she was uh, an alien woman, and uh, she opened up her shirt, and there it was. There's three of them. <laughs> so that stuck out because I was a, an adolescent boy, so that was a quite exciting scene for me at the time. But uh, the actual movie, like I said, from a, a cinematic perspective, yeah, maybe it's lame, kind of goofy, stupid, but it, it's part of my history. I love Total Recall. Um, so if you haven't seen that one, definitely check it out. But in that movie, Sharon Stone is Arnie's uh, wife, and she betrays him, of course, in the movie. I don't want to give much away, but she has this as a boot knife. Uh, one interesting note is that it was said, uh, I read on a forum many years ago, and I don't even remember if this is totally correct, but I think that Schrade was contracted to make a knife for that movie, and they never used a knife. I don't know why. I have no idea why, but I think Schrade made a boot knife for them, and then they end up going with this instead. Who knows? But anyway, super cool, part of cinema history, uh, 80s knife history, and Cold Steel history. And now, of course, because of Cold Steel changing, which, by the way, on you know a side note, I have to say, not as bad as everyone thought. Hopefully, it continues like that, but they're still putting out cool products. Lynn is still very much involved with the company, even though he doesn't own it anymore. So, you know, kudos to them, but knock on wood that nothing changes in time because sometimes you get those big corporations and at first, everything's cool. They buy out a company, things seem usual, but then eventually, you know, they're in a board meeting, a bunch of suit and ties, don't know much about knives, and they go, yeah, well, let's cut cost here, here, and here to make more money. And that's what everyone's fear really was, is that the quality is going to go downhill. But I have to say, so far, it's fine. Everything is still chugging along. So uh, good for them. Good for them. But, you know, nothing's like the originals. Come on. So this is a very, very cool addition to the collection. Again, the platoon part is, is awesome, and obviously I love... Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, grew up with all of his movies and stuff, so even though Total Recall was kind of a, a flop movie, uh, not at the time so much, but now, I mean, I'm sure if you're under 20 and you watch it, you're like, that was a complete waste of time. But uh, that's the kind of stuff that I watched. It was awesome, you know? But anyway, uh, that is it. That is my video on this particular trade. Cool limited Spider Co. And uh, even cooler um, old school Cold Steel Dagger. So, that is it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.